Hello, book two. I have a, a slightly odd feeling mail haul here, the last mail haul of the day, and I was reminded today of something I'd completely forgotten. There's no mail tomorrow. Tomorrow is a federal holiday, uh, which might go a long way to explaining the kind of hinky vibe I'm getting off this mail haul. This is, this is anticlimactic from start to finish. What a disappointing day of videos this is going to be. Uh, but we'll start off with the mail itself. Two magazines came. Uh, the first one is Birds and Blooms, which is was part of my uh, uh, no politics rule for magazine subscriptions. I'm so glad that I, that I did. This is a delightful magazine. Uh, this one, it's, it's full of great, uh, great photography uh, and neat articles about uh, uh, plants and usually and birds, but also mainly attracting birds. Uh, I don't have to worry about attracting birds here at Hyde Cottage because no self-respecting bird of any kind wants any, to be anywhere near my brawling crowd of a-hole sparrows who would rather, I keep noticing this and it keeps amazing me, they would rather fight than eat. I, I put out food, plenty of food for everybody. One of them grabs a piece of food sits there and starts to eat it, and another one will come over and try to steal it, and they'll end up fighting when there's plenty of food for both. So I don't get any scenic birds. <laughs> Nobody wants to come anywhere near this crowd of jerks. <laughs> uh, then the other one is Vanity Fair, which you might think would, would not have survived a purge of political magazines, considering that Graydon Carter has, uh, the editor of Vanity Fair, has a very long pedigree of hating Donald Trump. Uh, but I think that, in a way, excuses them. And I always find something, I always find tons of interesting things uh, in every issue of Vanity Fair. Like, for instance, I turn straight to uh, the Hot Type. There's a page uh, called Hot Type that uh, is just the editors of Vanity Fair picking the books they think are uh, are the big thing, are, are the big ticket items. I always love going through that, see if, uh, if any of it coincides with my own feeling. Uh, we, this time we have we have Joan Silver's Improvement. We have Heather the Totality by Matthew Weiner. We have a body of work by David Halbert, uh, which I have been suddenly seeing praised by people I really respect, and now I want it. <laughs> I never even thought that it would interest me. I never even considered requesting it or nicking a copy from any of the newspapers here in Boston, and now I wish I had. Uh, because it's everywhere now. <laughs> uh, I think I might be missing something good, so I'll, I'll have to look around for it and see if I can find a copy. Uh, oh, the new, the new, the gigantic new Calder biography by Jed Pearl. I did a, a review of that myself, uh, but I, I, somebody scooped me for it at the Christian Science Monitor. Somebody put in a request for reviewing it long before I knew it existed. The one thing the person liked, so they got it. <laughs> and then the newer Louise Erdrich. Uh, so that's a. Uh, that's the hot type this time around, future home of the living God. Uh, but there'll be there'll be other, uh, you know, you look at the table of contents. There'll be other uh, pieces that will appeal. Uh, where's the, where's the table of contents this time around? Uh, oh, I'll never find it in all these high-profile ads. Um, but uh, the 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 magazine's combination of. Uh, the two things they do that I really like are true crime, where they'll get somebody to write a long expose of something, of some crime at some university or museum or something or other. And also uh, portraits of the super rich, which I always find weirdly interesting. <laughs> I'm sure that one of those will be, uh, okay, there's a piece, uh, probably an adapted excerpt from Joe Bryden's book. Uh, yeah, okay, it's the usual, uh, it's the usual mix of pieces. Good, good. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, and there's, as I mentioned, there's a piece on the super wealthy. There's, there's a piece called To the Manor is Born. Uh, the description is for Sisters About Town, Lady Violet, Lady Alice, and Lady Liza Manners. London means being tabloid targets and Instagram regulars. Yet their family home, Belvoir Castle, Rebellion and tradition go hand in hand. So it's going to be a, a, an adoring piece about the three daughters of the Duke and Duchess of Rutland, uh, who, who the, the breeding happens to have, have, who have, to have been bountiful in this generation. The three girls are lovely, and they're, they're smart, and they're personable, 
uh, and they're the toast of London. <laughs> I'm hoping that, that I, well, that's the piece I will read first, obviously, and I'm hoping the piece has a lot on the history of the castle, because the, the, the Duke and Duchess of Rutland go back centuries. <laughs> uh, but then we have these two packages, and they're priority mail envelopes. So they don't feel legit. They don't feel quite legit. They feel like something I would mail to myself. <laughs> uh, they, they're from publishers, but uh, they can't be anything that I've requested. Uh, it just feels weird. It feels weird to think that somebody has a stack of priority mail envelopes to mail out books, even though that's exactly what I have. Uh, so I don't know why that would feel weird. Oh, and I was wrong. Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, fantastic. All right, great, great. Uh, there's no, no there's just an envelope. There's no pub sheet. This is Michael Laramie. This is the finished copy of King William's War. Isn't that lovely? Look at that. The first contest for North America, 1689 to 1697. While much has been written on the French and Indian War of 1750, 1754 to 1763, the colonial conflicts that preceded it have received comparatively little attention. Yet in King William's War, the first clash between England and France for control of North America, the patterns of conflict for the next 70 years were formed, uh, as were the goals and objectives of both sides, and the realization that the colonies of the two nations could not coexist. Oh, fantastic. All right, well, I have the, I have the advanced copy up on the shelf, and I just haven't got to it. I've made, I've made such lamentable inroads lamentably pathetic inroads into November's reading. <laughs> and this has been one of the casualties of that. So, uh, uh, great. Fantastic. I have the finished copy. I will do this this weekend. Uh, and this guy's a, a, the Michael Laramie is a, the, he lives in Arizona, but he's the author of a handful of military histories. So I'm in good hands. Good. All right. Wow. All right. Well, okay. So not quite Hinkley, not, not, not quite, uh, deplorable. <laughs> uh, let's see what the second one is and then we'll call it a day. Uh, let's see here. Okay, this is, um, all right, this is Clara at the Edge by Meryl Joe Fox. Kind of an attractive cover. Not anything I've heard of, nor, nor requested. Uh, so let's see, the pub sheet comes with blurbs. That's good. Can a rowdy purple wasp, a spirit guide with amazing powers, Help a woman confront her past and join life again, or is it too late? Hmm. Uh, Seventy-three-year-old Clara has lived with grief for more than thirty years due to the untimely deaths of her husband and her young daughter. But more than that, she lives with the weight and insidious creep of guilt. Clara believes she's partly responsible for her daughter's death, and so she closes herself off even from her alienated son, who she's desperate to protect as her last remaining family member. Cocooned in her house, rigid and afraid of change, she doesn't look up, not until the city wants to take her land. Her husband built the house, and it's going wherever she goes. Uh, okay, so this is She Writes Press. I quite know exactly what that is. It's probably one step above self-published. Let's see, it's an independent publishing company founded to serve members of She Writes, the largest global community of women writers online and women writers everywhere. Oh, that sounds big. Do any of you know about this? The She Writes community? Uh, it is a curated press that's both mission-driven and community-oriented, aiming to serve writers who wish to maintain greater ownership and control of their projects while still getting the highest quality editorial help possible for their work. She writes press titles have traditional distribution nationwide through Ingram Publishing. Okay, so if you if you have to say that you have traditional distribution nationwide, uh, then you're probably anticipating that someone is thinking you don't, which sounds self-published. Uh, hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't so much matter what the publisher. I don't really. It doesn't really matter what the publisher is. I'm. I there's a there's a a, a flavor to it that I, I I don't particularly like. I I have a feeling that that uh, I don't know anything about. She writes press. I, I've only learned about it just now. But I have a feeling uh, that a man, no matter how talented, would not be considered for them. That he that a man would be turned down because of his gender. Uh, and it would be nice if, if all such examples of that kind of behavior in any way, anywhere, 
were eliminated. <laughs> um, there's no such thing as discriminating virtuously. But, <laughs> but, but the book could be really good. Like I say, it doesn't, it doesn't so much matter to me. That if, you, if you poke under the bed sheets of a lot of, uh, of publishers, you will find horrible ties. <laughs> so so uh, I, maybe, maybe nobody's hands are quite clean. This comes out in, uh, in a week or two. Clara at the Edge. Okay. Uh, all right, so Clara at the Edge. That's kind of odd. And, and then King William's War, which is right up Steve's alley. So, so it's, uh, it's, it's hit or miss here. I don't know. Maybe I'll like the novel. Uh, uh, so it's those two plus Birds and Blooms uh, and Vanity Fair. And that is, that is our wrap-up of uh, the last mail of the week. So uh, the only shot here... There's no mail tomorrow. It's a, it's a federal holiday. So the only shot we have is Saturday. Uh, and that leaves tomorrow wide open. So in addition to doing, I will I think I will do a NaNoWriMo update and I will do more nonfiction recommendations. Uh, but also, uh, since it's a federal holiday, I, I will I will uh, go in and reap the rewards of that AMA uh, prompt video that I made and just answer questions. I'll do I'll do a video of answering questions. That sounds like fun. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's it for now. Clara at the Edge and King William's War, <laughs> and I will I will see you soon. Thank you, Book Two.